Hello, today we will be talking about another uh, straight race oriented subject matter uh, in regards to uh, the dynamics of uh, four stroke spark ignited engine and um, what you're looking at is a uh, an illustration of a cylinder with a piston in there rod intake port exhaust port and uh, whatever some kind of a drawing of what a muffler looks like <laughs> but anyway try my best I'm not an artist but you guys know what I'm trying to get at anyway uh, years ago I think three years ago I got invited overseas to give a presentation in the engineering class of a uh, well-renowned uh, um, college overseas <clears throat> and I gave a presentation to the engineering students and those engineering students had a uh, eco marathon project that they compete with internationally you know cars from the United States and Australia news all over the world and uh, they have a set amount of gasoline and they try to go as fast as they well as far as they could it's a mileage race and efficiency is the name of the game not necessarily power anyway <clears throat> I had to give uh, a lot of in-depth uh, look at what uh, they can probably achieve uh, to gain a little bit more and perhaps get competitive so uh, uh, that's where the class started and I talked for about uh, four hours I think and a bunch of questions thereafter and anyway uh, so soon after that I went back to the United States and I ended up with uh, another group of uh, engineering students with the Echo Marathon project. Uh, again, at a well, well uh, respected uh, Southern California college. And uh, they had four of their uh, students there and two of their professors uh, listening to me uh, try to talk to them and, and ask them questions. And it's, uh, it's amazing how you end up with uh, their answers. They're technologically driven and technology handicap. And I'll explain why, okay? Anyway, here we go. The, we will get to that point. Now, what we have here is an intake port, combustion chamber, piston, connecting rod, and of course, here's the crank. And here's the exhaust in red. Now. Um, what I'm going to try to do here is uh, explain, and I'll apply to a V8 engine or four-cylinder. The principle is the same, except that one engine is running by itself like this single piston. Motorcycle, whatever, it'll work. Okay, you can apply that, uh, except maybe in the parts of the intake port where you have cylinder cylinder robbing, and then on the exhaust collector when you have multiple cylinders coming into the collector, um, it can... Uh, uh, help it or hurt it. It depends. Okay, length has got a lot to do with it. And anyway, here we go. When I was there, I gave the rough fundamentals on how we should achieve. Uh, and uh, a lot of them have a pretty good grasp. You know, uh, they're college educated in engineering or combustion engines. And uh, it's amazing. But uh, we'll touch on that thing later on, but when I went back to the States, <clears throat> I came upon the students from a, a university. I'm, I'm not going to say who or what, but anyway, I approached them at a product of a friend of mine says, hey, why don't you talk to them and say, yeah, sure. Well, you know, so I did. I showed up and I, and I came upon four students, and I guess that's the cream of the crop of that group. And I said, wow, what a beautiful... Uh, project you guys got here and I asked them you know are you guys doing success they go yeah yeah we're, we're up there near the top so I go okay so uh, uh, looking at your engine combination they had their uh, I think it was probably a Rotax you know a four stroke engine or something Polaris what one of those okay and I'm looking at their uh, exhaust system and I asked uh, one of the students so how do you determine the length of your exhaust port and the guy said well sir we have what we call CFD computerized fluid dynamics 
and we put in the number, the bore and stroke and all this stuff and and the information comes out, it tells us what diameter pipe, so forth and so on and uh, it'll tell us exactly what's gonna happen inside the engine at a point of combustion and so forth. I go, okay, but how do you know that that is correct, that that is accurate, you know, the, the computer program, because like anything computers, uh, junk in is junk out. Go, well, we, that's what we've been uh, designing everything with, uh, CFD. All right, but is there another way that you can check? And I go, well, you know, that's what we depend on, and it seems like the technology is sound and good. Okay, well, could I give a suggestion? And the student goes, oh, okay. Now the, the professors, two of them, in fact, were behind, but uh, they weren't interceding. They wanted to see what their students will do or if they're up to it. I said, um, what is your maximum RPM? They go, oh, about 6,000 or 6,200, something like that. I'm trying to remember. Somewhere around 6,000 RPM. And what is your lowest RPM? About 2,500 RPMs. Okay, so you use CFD and it'll tell you where this pipe will be, length, diameter. But how do you know that is correct? Well, like I said, you know, another guy's uh, answered, we only use a CFD and everybody in Detroit, so forth, so on, uses that. Okay, may I suggest uh, another simple way? And the guy go, sure, okay, okay. What I do, and I've done it with my V8 race cars and stuff like that. I get a cheap can of paint right at this exhaust part, exhaust thing, okay? And I shake that black paint, white paint, whatever. Whatever paint the header is, you want something in contrast. If it's a black pipe, use white paint, okay? Gray pipe, use black paint. Now, I said, okay, so you're at that RPM. 2500 to 6250 or something like that. I put a paint, I shake the can real good, and I spray paint it right here, across like this, all the way down. Does anybody here know why I painted that header pipe? And they're like, hmm, uh, we don't know. Okay. The reason I painted that header pipe, cheap paint, it don't matter, good paint. What I want you guys to do is when you cycle your engine, from low to high RPM at the completion of the event. If it's a white paint on, on a black pipe, okay? Or, you know, a uh, gray pipe with a black paint, what you gotta look at is the paint will burn because you're looking at a high temperature right here. So, if let's say this is black paint, it, it uh, turns white all the way here and by the time it gets downstream right about there let's say the black paint turned white or gray what does that tell you what actually happens is that there's a drastic change in temperatures going downstream on the pipe and what actually happens there is that it's hot it cooks the paint and remember, heat has got its own energy. It will propel the exhaust gases down, okay? And uh, that's just a law of nature. You got heat, you got expansion, and it will propel itself downstream. But suddenly, that black paint that turned to, to gray or whatever changed back to black right here. That signifies there's a drastic drop in temperature. That drastic drop in temperature the scavenging and the exhaust drastically slows down. And then when it's, let's say it's right about this area here, and it stopped, it changed back to its original color. Chop it off. That's where you want to join it back to a collector from other multiple cylinders, okay? Because once it's hyperactive coming out of the head, and drastically drops in temperature, it will drastically slow down as well. And when it slows down is when you want to put your collector and everything else so that when the other exhaust pulses come in, this is slowing down, the next pulse comes in, they push it there. One, four, three, two. Okay? So they self scavenge themselves from the multiple firing sequences. That's important. But I go, since you guys have a single cylinder, 
there's no uh, following exhaust pulse. You're at the mercy of your exhaust. And if it loses energy here, guess what it wants to do? It wants to come back. Okay. Now, what would be beneficial to your efforts, I go, is that if you cut it right here and dump it to atmosphere, that's your end of your pipe, then you will not have any energy, okay, or you dispel it to atmosphere and you dumped it. It doesn't have a tendency to, to if it's too long, want to go back or run and contaminate the incoming intake uh, mixture during the overlap phase. Like for here, for example, if the paint changed right about here is where I put my muffler. Okay? Pretty much, there's no set thing like two inches before or after. Start experimenting. That is the sweet point that's trying to tell you. You are very close. Okay? So when it comes down there, the exhaust things, it even loses energy again because it's even more cooled. And wants to come back and usually a muffler system also acts like a one-way check valve when the flow comes out and gets past these chambers and wants to head back it hits these corners it sees the deflector plates and it doesn't come back as much that is where you want to put your muffler if that rules require a muffler or that's where you want to dump it to atmosphere so your efficiency um, numbers goes up and the professors looked at each other like, oh, okay. I said, that is just a, it's an old hot rotting trick. And how can you improve that? Well, they go, well, then uh, we just probably have to put in numbers of the CFD and see if we can change the diameter and all that. I go, well, another thing that you can do is right about here where it turns down. I go, right, while it's, it's hot, there's some unburned gases as well, okay, and continues downstream. What I usually do, and I've done that on my cars for many, many years, I put a little hole here just to introduce fresh air into the exhaust system. Around this bend, because the flow wants to go on the long side, okay, and it'll pull fresh air from underneath here on this little bend. What does that do? If you notice anybody, all and everyone here that uh, welds, when you weld and you add a little bit more oxygen, the fire is going like this. When you add a little bit more oxygen, it goes. Now it really fire lights, lights up. Now you got more heat. You're introducing fresh air for some of the unburned fuel that's going downstream and lights it up again and introduces more heat to continually propel it down the exhaust okay so um, that is one way to help your scavenging okay exhaust scavenging anyway that said so the subject goes back so I go how do you determine your intake length and your uh, how long and what's the diameter you go well sir uh, like as always Computerized fluid dynamics. I go. So, I said. So you you take that computerized program as gospel as far as powers are concerned, correct? You go. Yes, sir. I go. Okay. I will tell you again how to find out if you're correct. Now, I don't have this camera. We'll see. I have a yellowish cloud here on top. And what I told them is that you should observe. If you have a camera on the dyno or on your um, Echo Marathon uh, project vehicle, it's really a streamlined uh, car and very efficient as far as our, you know, aerodynamic wise. Well, so they think, but we'll touch on that subject again. Now, um, let me make one comment. Most cars are designed backwards, okay? Most cars, when you put them on a uh, uh, wind tunnel you turn it backwards it'll actually be more aerodynamic well that's another story that we'll touch again now remember that guys <laughs> anyway everybody's thinking now and i told him full throttle 2500 rpm 
correct? Low SR, they go, yes, sir. Now, when you're at that low RPM, there's a tendency for the pulses to go back and forth slower, okay? And when you're at the lowest RPM and you see a fog right on top of the throttle body or the, uh, the intake trumpets, okay, or your Ventura right about there, you see fog, that's reversion. And if you're running a carburetor, any reversion, it gets past the throttle plate into the Venturi, or what they call the vena contractor right there. I should have wrote a little uh, uh, Venturi there. Vena contractor, when it sees reverse pulses on the vena contractor or the Venturi, it messes up the mixing uh, uh, efficiency of the carburetor. It doesn't do it with a throttle body, of course, because when you see this reverse pulse, the Venturi works on, on low pressure or absence of pressure, not vacuum, it does not exist. So when suddenly it sees a backflow, it, it throws the metering all off. So I go, if your cloud is a lot here, you start spacing that runner, okay? Where the cloud is below the throttle plate so it doesn't upset the Venturi, or if you have an injector sitting right there. Correct? And they're like looking at each other and the professor is like, uh-oh, okay, now we got somebody here, you know, that's not really uh, thinking normal, <laughs> if that's the way, you know. And, but anyway, so I go, all right, so now you determine your length. Let's say it's perfect. You don't see this cloud on top at the lowest RPM. Even a full throttle, check that cloud. All right? Because sometimes when you have too much back pressure, that cloud will be right up there too. Okay? It's going to back up. And you see this. Don't get mistaken by that. Now, let's say at full throttle, even at the lowest RPM, it is clear. You don't see any fog coming up on top of the trumpets. Then I turn around. Then how do you know this diameter is correct. They look at each other and they go, CFD? Okay, CFD. Is there a way that you know that the length and the diameter of the port runners is correct at high RPM? Let's say, what's your RPM now? Maximum 6250? All right. At 6000 RPM, if you're pulling Okay, I said, right on, getting ahead of myself here. I said, you hook up a vacuum gauge here. Anywhere around this area, pretty much close to where the, the valve is at. The reason you hook up a vacuum gauge is that if you're pulling at full throttle, you're pulling three inches of vacuum. We'll just use that for automotive terms, okay? I, 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 but uh, we'll keep it simple. We'll use automotive vacuum, okay? Vacuum. Actually, it's absence of pressure, but we'll use vacuum. But they always talk two, three inches of vacuum, and I've always wondered, how can there be vacuum two or three inches when it's zero? There's nothing. So how do you say two or three or four inches of vacuum? How can you say, or how can we understand vacuum in a manner of three or four inches or six inches? It's saying there's more of nothing? Six inches of vacuum is more of nothing than zero or than one inch. I mean, I'm baffled, but we'll touch on that subject later on. Now, when you see three inches of vacuum at full throttle, I told him, your CFD is not going to tell you that. The CFD just gives you a predetermined um, runner length and diameter to consider and run. But now I'm telling you which way to check. Now, when you put three inches there, it's telling you the intake is restricted. Okay? Could be the throttle plates are too small or the, the throttle body or carburetor is too small. Let's just say it's ideal according to, let's say Weber gave that to you or somebody, uh, AccuFive gave you a throttle body for this particular application. Pretty much it's close. I don't doubt that. Now this is the factor that you, you got to consider. If it's three inches, that's telling you, you got too much of a restriction, okay? Your pumping losses are way over. 
the magic number is half an inch. Okay? So that you know you're ingesting just about everything without any further restriction from the throttle plate, the venturi of the, the carburetor, or the runner. Half an inch at full throttle. So what you do, if there's three inches, you enlarge this. And it's ideal to have like a little taper. So while you're, you're coming down, you're accelerating the flow to ram into the seats. Now, half an inch tells you from three inches, you gotta make this thing larger. Or you may make it shorter if it's already too big. So you just gotta have to play with the diameter and the length. Now, your length affects, if you see this fog, let's say you're ideal on your length. And you made this thing a little bit fatter with a little taper. Now it went down to two inches of vacuum. Then you made it a little bit larger here still, okay? And maybe back it up a bit now. And now you're down to one inch. Couple more changes here and there. Runner length, again, the taper. And when you finally reach half an inch at 62.50, you are at your ideal runner length, volume, and everything else, and you don't see any kind of fogging going on here at low, mid, or high RPM. Then you're pretty much uh, reach the uh, ideal length of your runner because now at high RPM, you're pumping half an inch of vacuum. Your runner length here, it's telling you it loses the temperature drastically drops right about here. You cut it off and then you put your muffler. Okay? You put your muffler there, then you're pretty much efficient because if the muffler or the primary pipe is too short, that way you lose low speed torque. You lose all sorts of power. Okay? And over here as well, you will lose the same amount of signal and uh, efficiency that's why sometimes when you you have an engine that okay i know of a, when i was overseas they had a competition they called engine roar where they they get on the and this was a racetrack and when they floor the gas and it goes the louder it is that's that guy's a winner the truth of the matter is that engine roar is actually the runner length is probably too big and too short. And what you're hearing is this, <laughs> the dynamics, the sound that the, the intake port tells you or, or reveals itself as too much. Okay, there's no velocity. What you want to hear is no roar at all. What you want to hear is when you mash the pedal, you go, whop, whop, instead of whoop. Okay, when it does that, it's bogging down. The signal's too slow. You can hear the cycling over here. Okay, you're not supposed to hear none of that. So when you go full throttle, <laughs> ingest it real good. Now you got you got a very responsive engine instead of this. Someone even goes, <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god. Okay, so uh, that's just a little um, um, outlook into the dynamics of an engine. Listen to that sound. Look at that heat. You can apply this on your V8 or your V6 or your four-cylinder, your primary pipe. Color it and see where it ends up and cut it right there. Okay, and that's where you put the collector. So when, when number one goes down and, and starts to slow down, changes color here, cut it off, and number four comes in, and cut it off right there too and join them together so they all one, four, three, two, you know, they start pushing each other through the atmosphere. Okay, so it's really simple. And it's a, this is a thinking man's game. And the guys that would look at and evaluate what is going on will probably more likely end up the winner. And the guys that just put whatever pipe or put whatever intake runner because a CFD tells them or whatever, <laughs> you gotta be a lot smarter than that. Just consider those things that you see, and I think I haven't forgotten anything here.
all right so uh, we're not even talking about valve angles and all that, but this is just strictly a runner leg on the intake and exhaust okay so put the little hole right there in fact sometimes where the header pipe comes in and bends this way put it right there put a little titty bitty hole start experimenting okay anyway please uh, subscribe and like Ben Almi the racing here on YouTube and uh, hopefully I get over the uh, hump there and start getting uh, some kind of uh, monetization and, and uh, it, it's nice to get paid to impart some knowledge so that uh, we all help each other in our quest for speed power and efficiency okay guys thank you very much take care <laughs>